This week, Miami-Dade commissioners approved Mayor Daniela Levine Cava's proposal to cut property taxes by 1%. I had the chance to speak with Mayor Levine Cava about the tax break and her proposed budget for next year, including how she plans to tackle the housing crisis. Here's our conversation. Mayor, as always, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Jackie. So this week, commissioners approved your proposed 1% property tax cut. This would be the first property tax cut in over a decade. What is the significance of this if it is approved in September? Jackie, this is huge. Not only the first time in 10 years that we actually say to the property owners, uh, we want to give you a break because we know that you're struggling, but it's actually the lowest property tax rate since 1982, so in 40 years. So we know that properties are appreciating in value. We know that for uh, renters, that's translating uh, with higher taxes to higher rates. We know for homeowners, uh, they are struggling even with the 3% cap on Homestead. But we also know that lots of the property taxpayers are investors, and um, we want to be sure that we can have both a tax cut, a meaningful one, and make investments that will provide real relief to people struggling with housing costs. Speaking of relief, residents need help as quickly as possible. How fast could this take effect? Well, the budget is approved for October, but we're going to spend the summer making sure we have the programs in place, designing the program so we can hit the ground running on October 1st. We have to do intensive outreach to our uh, homeowners who are struggling to pay the mortgage. Uh, we're reaching out to landlords now to find out who would be willing to take advantage of our uh, workforce incentive housing program and bring down the cost from market to affordable or uh, workforce levels. And uh, we'll be expanding the emergency rental assistance program to those who may not fall within the federal income guidelines, which are quite low. Uh, but we know that people who are working and, and trying, struggling to pay the rent are not able to pay their bills. So uh, this, is, this is a three-prong approach. So will any other services be affected by this tax cut? We are fortunate that we don't have to cut services and we're looking to the future, Jackie. I think that's a critical piece that some people might miss. Our budget is larger this year in some part due to the federal government relief money, the American Rescue Plan. That is an artificial bump in our budget that will be gone in two years. So we can't make a budget this year without thinking about the future and the basic services that we all rely upon, our excellent police and fire, our roads, transit, parks, uh, all of the basic things that people rely upon. And if we cut too much uh, this year, we are going to really be stuck uh, in a couple of years paying for those basic supports. You mentioned the artificial bump from the federal government, but that money will be coming in in addition to, because of the property values rising 10 percent from 2020 to 2021, the county is poised to make roughly $154 million, which means there could be a surplus. I know some commissioners wanted to be more aggressive with a 2 percent cut. Was that feasible and could that still happen? It is up to the commissioners to approve a budget and then uh, I also have to uh, sign on to it, if you will. Uh, but we're looking for a responsible and responsive budget. The fact that we had nine members of the commission to support me in this first round is very promising, but it is not the final vote. So we have to do our work this summer to make sure that they understand and that the residents understand that what we're proposing is, is really the best alternative, the, the only alternative, I would say, in this terrible housing market where we are at the epicenter of the housing crisis. We, we all know this is on everybody's lips talking about it. Workers leaving town, our children not affording to live here, um, people having a difficult time finding people to work in jobs because of the high cost of living driven by housing. So we, we need to make sure people understand this plan which is an innovative plan that will make sure that we can continue to grow and have a, a place where people can live and thrive. If the millage rate is lowered, can it be raised again? So it would be very difficult to, to raise it again. 
uh, in this tax season. If, for example, they had gone for a steeper cut uh, yesterday, then um, if they wanted to go back after they've studied the budget, which they only just got on Friday, because that's the timeline, if they wanted to go back, they'd have to do a whole new mailing to all the property owners. It would be expensive and time consuming and not a good path forward. So they certainly were preserving their options while they study the budget. And again, we'll be making the case going backwards is very hard. And down the line in a couple of years, if we uh, do face inflation and recession and property values do not continue to grow, then we are going to be stuck. And, and we would definitely have to choose between cutting services or raising taxes, which would not be a popular thing to do. I want to move on quickly because this was something that also just got approval. There are almost 600,000 Miami-Dade residents with a suspended driver's license, and most of them are due to non-safety-related issues. Many lack the resources to pay the fees. There is a new task force in place now. What will it do? How will it work? We're very excited that the commission signed on to this as well, the findings of a two-year uh, task force. So we've got all these people and many of them are driving without licenses. So then if there is an accident, then guess what? All of us are paying more in our car insurance because <laughs> these other folks are not insured. We know that if you lose your license, you could lose your job. So this is job instability and it's not safe for any of us. So again, these are people who the vast majority it didn't pay a parking fine or uh, something something that they might not even have known about. They might not have even received the notices uh, in the mail. And now suddenly they find themselves with a suspended license and the method for paying their fines and fees has been limited. This is going to create a special court to accelerate the review of those cases, to get people back uh to be legal drivers, uh, to spur the economy and make us safer, safer on the roads. You were at the White House for President Biden's Safer Communities Act law signing. How important is this legislation to protect communities from gun violence in your estimation? This was an important step forward. It's been 20 years since there's been any significant uh, gun reform legislation. And these were issues that were bipartisan in nature and everybody could agree. Uh, it makes sense to protect people from domestic abuse, whether or not it's a marriage relationship. Uh, it makes sense to look at the age. It looks makes sense to look at uh, danger flags. And, and all of these things are a step in the right direction. I certainly think more needs to be done, but I'm very grateful for Congress acting, uh, again, in a bipartisan way, and helping to protect us in the face of these horrific incidents that continue unabated around our country when the wrong people have guns. The primaries are upon us in August. What is the county doing to make sure that this will be a fair and a trouble-free election? I believe we have one of the best elections departments in the country. Uh, we have been uh, scrupulous in notifying the public about any updates and how they can vote safely, uh, making sure they know their precinct, uh, making sure that they have timely requests for uh, vote by mail, drop off boxes, all of it. And uh, once again, we've mailed out to everybody updates and I'm looking forward to a smooth election process. Mayor Levine Kava, as always, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Jackie.